Scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, have successfully recovered nuclear genome sequences from two exceptionally ancient Neanderthals. The femur of a male, unearthed in 1937 at Holenstein Stadel Cave in southern Germany, and the upper jawbone of a young female Neanderthal discovered in 1993 at Skladina Cave in Belgium. For simplicity, we will refer to these specimens as the German Neanderthal and the Belgium Neanderthal. According to the researchers, ancient mitochondrial DNA from the femur of a Neanderthal helps to resolve the complicated relationship between modern humans and Neanderthals. The genetic data provides a timeline for a proposed interbreeding by a lineage more closely related to modern humans. The femur of a German Neanderthal provided evidence that his ancestors may have included hominins from Africa, who were closely related to modern humans. These hominins interbred with Neanderthals already present in Europe, leaving their mark on the Neanderthal's mitochondrial DNA. Just to be clear, when they refer to hominins from Africa, they're referring to early Homo sapiens. The German Neanderthal, labelled HST on the diagrams, carries an unusually divergent mitochondrial DNA lineage, one that falls far outside the range of other Neanderthals and is closer to modern humans. This is a truly shocking discovery, which has not been widely covered. The implications are staggering. It begins in the shadows of a German cave, with a fragment of bone that should have been unremarkable. The German Neanderthal femur was chewed by carnivores long before the first modern human set foot in Europe. Yet when scientists coaxed DNA from its surviving cells, they uncovered a secret that rewrote the genetic history of an entire species. At some point before 130,000 years ago, the dominant Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA lineage was replaced across most of their range. This event is most plausibly explained by gene flow, from an early population related to modern humans known as the late introgression hypothesis. Perhaps entering Eurasia during a warmer period and interbreeding with local Neanderthals. However, another explanation, known as the deep structure hypothesis, is that the German HST Neanderthal represents a deeply divergent branch of Neanderthals. The German Neanderthal carried a maternal lineage so deeply divergent from all other known Neanderthals that its very survival was a statistical improbability. The rest of the Neanderthal world had long since converged upon a different mitochondrial heritage, the result of a massive genetic replacement event. But here, in the heart of Ice Age Europe, was a survivor from a more ancient time. Over time, a new modern mitochondrial DNA swept through the Neanderthal gene pool, leaving only traces of the older lineage in rare, isolated pockets. The German Neanderthal was one of those rare cases, a genetic time capsule preserving the original maternal heritage of his species. What's been put together is a complicated model and epicycles, ideas like natural selection, to kind of make it work. It's not impossible, it may be the case, but one, one, one wonders whether profoundly different models might actually explain the data. An example of another model that might be able to explain the data that we've been playing with is one where there's much more DNA in Neanderthals from modern humans than the 3 or 5% that's been estimated. Mm. And we can get such models to fit, but here it's 30% or 50% or 70%. The Belgium Neanderthal jawbone is dated to 120,000 years old, a time known as the Eemian or Sangamonian interglacial. The Neanderthal girl's DNA is one of the oldest to have been extracted from a Neanderthal fossil and has significantly contributed to the genetic mapping of the Neanderthal genome and the comparison with Homo sapiens. The German Neanderthal femur is dated to around 124,000 years ago, just 4,000 years older than the Belgium Neanderthal girl. Both Neanderthals lived at least 120,000 years ago, making them far older than other Neanderthals whose genomes have been sequenced so far. The researchers could date the split between the German maternal lineage and that of other Neanderthals to roughly 270,000 years ago. In evolutionary terms, this is a deep canyon, not a minor rift. It hinted at a time when Europe was home to multiple Neanderthal populations, some of which diverged so early that they were effectively separate branches of the same species. 
the German Neanderthal was one of the last representatives of that older branch, persisting long after most of its kin had vanished or been absorbed into other groups. Incredibly, these two sites are only about 425 kilometers or 265 miles away from each other as the crow flies over relatively easy terrain. So this is really surprising that the two have different maternal lineages and implies they have been isolated for 100,000 years if the maternal modern human lineage entered the Neanderthal lineage at least 220,000 years ago. Mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells generating the energy needed for life. Unlike the DNA found in the cell's nucleus, mitochondrial DNA is distinct and passed exclusively from mother to child. Because of this, it serves as a valuable tool for tracing maternal ancestry and determining when populations diverged. Over time, mutations naturally accumulate in mitochondrial DNA at a relatively steady pace, allowing scientists to identify distinct genetic groups and estimate how long it has been since two individuals shared a common maternal ancestor. This finding forces us to reconsider the demographic structure of Neanderthal Europe during the last interglacial. The Belgium Neanderthal, represented by a partial jawbone and teeth living at roughly the same time, carried the modernized maternal DNA lineage. Her nuclear genome shows close affinity to later Neanderthals in Europe, such as those from Vindija Cave in Croatia, indicating long-term population continuity in the West. Yet on the maternal side, she was modern, while the German Neanderthal was not. This contrast within such a small geographic range shows that Neanderthal populations could differ markedly in their maternal histories, even while sharing much of their nuclear DNA. It is a sign of complex population structure, with isolation, contact, and partial replacement shaping the genetic landscape. The Emian interglacial, when both the German and Belgium Neanderthals lived, was a warm interval between glacial periods. Forests expanded northward, game was plentiful, and Europe's landscapes supported diverse ecosystems. These conditions may have facilitated contacts between populations that had previously been separated by ice. Yet the persistence of an ancient lineage shows that not all barriers fell. Some groups must have remained in ecological or geographic refugia where the waves of genetic change rolling through the continent could not reach them. One possibility is that the German Neanderthal population occupied a niche within the Neanderthal range where contacts with other groups were infrequent. Another is that they maintained cultural or social boundaries that limited interbreeding with neighbouring populations. In either case, the result was the same. The survival of a lineage that should, statistically speaking, have disappeared. The Altai Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA recovered from Denisova Cave provides a critical point of comparison with other Neanderthals, including those from Holenstein Stadel Cave in Germany and Skladina Cave in Belgium. The complete mitochondrial DNA genome of the Altai Neanderthal, an adult female who lived around 125,000 years ago, shows that she belonged to the late Neanderthal maternal lineage. For clarification, the Altai Neanderthal lived in Denisova Cave, but not a Denisovan or a hybrid. When the Altai sequence is compared to the mitochondrial DNA of the German Neanderthal, a striking difference emerges. The German Neanderthal carries an unusually divergent mitochondrial DNA lineage, one that falls far outside the range of other Neanderthals, including the Altai woman. Genetic estimates place the split between the German Neanderthal and typical Neanderthal maternal DNA at several hundred thousand years ago, implying long-term isolation of its maternal line. In contrast, the Altai Neanderthal's mitochondrial DNA falls squarely within the typical Neanderthal range, indicating she was part of a population that had undergone the same gene-flow-driven replacement event as other late Neanderthals. The Belgian Neanderthal, like that of the Altai individual, also belongs to the standard late Neanderthal clade. This means that although the Altai and Belgian populations lived far apart geographically, Siberia and Belgium, and were separated by significant climatic and ecological barriers, they shared a relatively recent maternal ancestry compared to the German Neanderthal. 
This shared lineage likely originated after the mitochondrial DNA replacement event that brought the modern human-related maternal haplotype into the Neanderthal gene pool. The implications of these differences are significant for understanding Neanderthal population structure. The Altai and Belgium DNA suggests that a large portion of the Neanderthal range, stretching from Western Europe to Central Asia, was dominated by a single maternal lineage during the later part of their history. The divergent HST lineage shows that not all Neanderthal populations were incorporated into this genetic sweep, hinting at either persistent refugial groups or relic populations that maintained older maternal lineages for hundreds of thousands of years. Thus, the Altai Neanderthal maternal DNA acts as a genetic anchor for what we can consider the typical late Neanderthal maternal genome, against which more divergent DNA like the German Neanderthal can be measured. When placed in the context of the Belgian and German Neanderthals, it helps outline a complex picture of interconnected populations with occasional long-term isolation. This complexity suggests that while there was widespread gene flow across the Neanderthal range at certain times, other maternal lineages survived in isolated pockets, producing the deep divergences we now detect. In southern France, only 500 kilometers or 300 miles from the caves of Belgium and southern Germany, Thorine, the French Neanderthal, emerged from the archaeological record, also represented by a partial jaw and teeth. The individual from Grotta Mandrin lived 50,000 years ago and belonged to a population with its own story of separation, survival and contact. Layers at Grotta Mandrin reveal alternating occupations by Neanderthals and modern humans and the Thorin Neanderthal shows traits suggesting connections to other archaic populations outside the Central European core. Like his German counterpart, he represents a lineage that does not fit neatly into the later homogenized Neanderthal genetic picture. The link between these two Neanderthals is not one of direct ancestry, but of shared implication. Both stand as markers of Neanderthal diversity at a time when Europe was not the uniform Neanderthal continent that many once imagined. The relationship between Thorin of Grotta Mandrin and HST in Germany is a relationship of analogy rather than kinship. Both stand outside the genetic and cultural norms of the later Neanderthal world. Both hint at connections beyond the immediate geographic sphere, Thorin to populations interacting with modern humans in the Rhone Valley, HST in Germany, to an older, now vanished Neanderthal lineage. The Belgium Neanderthal sits between them, genetically mainstream yet contemporaneous, part of the long-term stable population that dominated Western Europe. Together, these three individuals illustrate the complexity of Neanderthal population history during the last interglacial. They show that Europe was a mosaic of populations, some carrying the new mitochondrial signature, others preserving the old, all contributing to the genetic fabric of their time. This complexity has profound implications for how we understand Neanderthal extinction. If their populations were structured in this way, sometimes isolated, sometimes interconnected, it may help explain why some Neanderthals groups disappeared quickly while others persisted. Volcanic eruptions, competition with modern humans, and local ecological pressures would have affected different populations in different ways. An isolated group like HST of Germany might vanish without replacement, taking its unique genetic heritage with it. Meanwhile, a more interconnected group like the one from Belgium might survive longer, bolstered by gene flow from neighbouring populations, but eventually be absorbed into the wider tide of modern human expansion. In the end... The story of these Neanderthals is not a simple one of decline. It is a story of endurance and adaptation, of ancient lineages holding on in hidden corners of a continent, of communities that navigated the shifting climates and landscapes of Pleistocene Europe. Thorin and German is a reminder that within the broader narrative of Neanderthal history lie smaller, more intricate stories, stories of survival against the odds, of heritage carried across hundreds of millennia, of identities forged in the interplay of isolation and contact. The Neanderthal bones of Siberia, Germany, France and Belgium are silent now, but the DNA they carry speaks volumes. It tells us that Europe's Neanderthal past was richer and more varied than we once believed. 
and that within that richness lie clues to the resilience, adaptability, and ultimate fate of our closest relatives. The combination of genetic and archaeological evidence paints a portrait of populations that were not static relics of the past, but active, adaptable human groups. They had deep histories, some stretching back hundreds of thousands of years, and they thrived in environments that demanded both physical resilience and cultural innovation.